AstraZeneca, Bristol Myers Squibb, both announcing multi billion dollar deals in the last 24 hours. Here to break down what this all could mean for the industry is former FDA Commissioner Dr. Scott Gottlieb on the boards of Pfizer and Illumina, also a CNBC contributor. Dr. Gottlieb, great to see you again. Welcome back. Thanks a lot. Thanks for having me. What to make of this spending spree by Bristol, AbbVie, and, and Astra? Well, when I think when you look at the deals that got done this year, and certainly the larger deals, the deals were, that were over five billion dollars in valuation, a couple of themes emerge. Um, a number of them, three of them, three of the seven deals that were done that were over five billion dollars were done in the neurology field, and four of the seven were in complex formulations, particularly biologics, including the two deals that were done in the last 24 hours. I think the fact that companies are looking to do deals with more complex formulations and biologicals reflect some influence of the recent policy changes in Washington where the Inflation Reduction Act is going to impose price controls on pharmaceuticals sold within the Medicare system. And those price controls will be implemented at nine years for small molecules and 13 years for biologicals and complex formulations. And so I think companies are now starting to shift investment capital into those areas and looking for areas in particular where there are formulation challenges and manufacturing challenges that create natural barriers to entry. So you're not dependent on patents alone as Washington starts to erode um, the monopoly conferred by patents. You want to look for other ways to protect franchises. And the deal making and the venture capital flows, for that matter, reflect that. Was this a mistake by the government that's led to this? Well, I think it's certainly a mistake to create uh, such a large differential between small molecules and biologicals. Uh, that's going to change incentives, and it's going to force people to try to shift capital into those areas where they can protect their franchise for longer durations of time. The problem is that the CBO doesn't do a really good job of modeling how changes in incentives will change behavior when it comes to flows of investment capital. They never have historically done that. So this was really a blind spot for Congress and for the administration when they crafted this legislation. There was a perception in Washington that the biologicals represented the more innovative side of the industry, and so therefore they wanted to protect it better. But that, I think, was short-sighted. And you're seeing, certainly with the deal-making and the venture capital flows, that change in how people are now starting to use their capital. I think you're going to start to see it also reflect in pharmaceutical pipelines. They're a little slower to react because if a company's leveraged to a particular area of, of discovery, if it has a good small molecule franchise, they're not going to shut that down overnight. What they're going to change overnight is the kinds of deals they do. And what's also going to change overnight is where venture capital allocates their money. And so they're starting to allocate in places where you have complexity, where you're going to have more uh, protection conferred, not just because they have 13 years of protection from the price controls, but they're harder to copy once they go generic. If you look at the biologicals, once they become generic and are subject to competition from biosimilars, the price reductions are on the order of 40 percent versus small molecules, which is 95 percent. And that's why you see drugs like Humira, which face competition from biosimilars, but still maintain a pretty robust franchise. It's just less competition in these markets, and that's where you're seeing capital flow. Unfortunately, I think consumers are going to lose out, patients and public health, because there's a lot of drug targets, particularly intracellular targets and mental health, that just can't be attacked with things like monoclonal antibodies. And so you're mm -hmm. going to see capital shift out of those modalities. We, we mentioned the deals, and then we say the caveat, if they happen. From a regulatory environment, what's your outlook there? Well, look, I'm on the board of Pfizer. They closed the deal with Seattle Genetics. I think that the companies do have some guidance and some perspective on what deals they're able to close if you're certainly investing outside of your core area. We don't have any direct competition within your pipeline. I think what you're seeing companies do and people who are contemplating deals, and I'm certainly seeing it um, in some of the conversations I'm having, is impute longer periods of time to close a deal. You know that the FTC is going to have a first and a second review, and you may have to litigate, and so you have to structure these deals to give them a longer time horizon to close the deal. And some, some of the deals won't get done because of that, but I think now companies are eyes wide open on what they need to do to get these deals closed, and they're going to start to structure the deals that way.